Hey, I'm Joe Farrell. Welcome to Geek Toolkit. If you haven't been to this channel before, Geek Toolkit is all about uh, geeky projects with Raspberry Pis, Arduinos. We do some home automation stuff and also a bit of video game stuff. The thing about my channel is at the end of it, I don't want you to just see something I built, but also understand and learn from it so that you understand some of the technology and if you want, can build it yourself. In this video, I've got a really cool demo I'm going to show you, but just to introduce it, I want to talk about the concept and what we have going on behind me. The idea is a dynamic arcade machine. So what you've got behind me here is two or what are called Dynaframes on the sides of this TV. They're vertical TVs that are run by Raspberry Pis and I've got instructions on how to build them, but basically they show artwork and they're actually, they'll switch, they can show videos. They're actually talking to each other as well. So this one will sync up with the other one when it switches art. And they're also on a DC playlist. They support playlists. So by them being showing DC comic stuff and the middle video game list being DC comic stuff, everything's in alignment right now. You can see I've got Batman and Superman and so on from DC. Now the thing I don't have from DC is I've got Nat here from the Marvel Universe basically playing my proxy. Um, that was a Nat proxy joke if you got that one. <laughs> Being my proxy because of coronavirus, I don't have uh, my buddy Lou, who would probably be here helping me out with this video using facial recognition, or my buddy Vince from Vince's Tech Shop. I basically have to resort to a standee. So the scenario is that Nat here has walked in the arcade. She's more of a Marvel fan, and the camera is mounted to the side of the arcade machine. When it sees her, this is here. There we go. When it sees her, it's going to send a signal over to the computer to basically switch themes over to a Marvel theme which it did. So now we've got an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. theme with more of a, basically a Marvel background. And that was dynamically done. Now, not only did the background change, but also the game list. If you look at the game list, we're gonna have X-Men and Street Fighter games, basically Marvel-based games. The artwork also changes. So we see Captain America over here, and what will happen is that will signal over to the other frame, which should also show Marvel artwork soon. And then they'll start doing a playlist of Marvel artwork instead of DC. At this point, the entire arcade has been dynamic and has actually switched over. This is what I mean by dynamic arcade. That is, I think, a really cool, powerful scenario. Now, you might ask, okay, well, you know, what if I don't have other people that use my arcade? Or maybe that's not an interesting scenario for you. You just want all your games showing. And that's cool, too. But there's other things you could do with this. Once you can dynamically switch the game list and the theme, you could do something like, say, have a gun game list where you have a, a light gun and you scan an NFC tag and then you could filter to just those. Or maybe a trackball game list with like centipede and millipede on it. You could have a trackball if it's separate, you scan it and so on. You could just simply do it with a button. I mean, there's all sorts of things here where you can actually switch the list. Now, one thing I wanna say, I'm using the attract mode front end and these are called displays, these separate things. Attract mode has the ability to switch displays with the arrow keys. But what I'm doing here is actually jumping to a particular display based on an event. That's a different thing that I haven't seen anyone else do before. But without that, you can't do something like detect a face and jump to their game list. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. Because that took a bit of work and it's kind of specific, that will be what this video focuses on. But because of that, you'll learn a lot of skills on how to do some really cool stuff in attract mode to build this out yourself and do different things. But let me talk about a couple of other cool scenarios that I wanna build in the future, just to give you, again, more ideas of what this can do. Imagine you walk into the arcade and you do something like, take me to Japan, and you've got like four or five game arcade setups with attract mode on them. And they all switch over to just Japanese games. Or say you walk into the arcade, and this is where I'm gonna tie this into home automation in a future video. You say, take me to 1985. And all of a sudden, all of your game lists are just 1985. And your Dynaframes, if you have them, those switch over to movie, art, movie posters from that era or maybe advertisements from that era. And then you could have your lighting and everything else adapt as well. I just think that's a really cool scenario, like an entirely dynamic arcade setup. And we could do it with like an Amazon device or a Google device, basically, we can just tie those into Home Assistant and then have that trigger the arcade. Or if you want something really simple, like just walking up and hitting a button, you can do that too. This all works off of keyboard shortcuts. So right now I'm on the first keyboard shortcut and I can hit two 
and you'll see the middle one will switch over to the DC uh, list here. And it takes it a second because it has to talk to the Dynaframes right now. But now it's on DC. Now say I want my full game list. I want my DC and my Marvel games. Well, I've got a button for that too. And if the camera detects two people, it will actually switch over to that. One last demo. What if I walk back into the arcade setup? What happens then? Well, it sees me, the camera sees me, it shows a green light, and we'll see that switch back over to the Batman setup or the DC setup. For the rest of this video, we're gonna hand over to the PC and handle it from there. Thanks for your patience up till now. Let me go show you how to build this. Okay, so now let's talk about how we're gonna do all of this. The first thing I wanna do is just talk about attractor mode for a second. Now this isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to install it. I'm gonna assume that you know how to do that or have watched other videos. But we will talk a little bit about it so that when we talk about the lingo, you'll understand it. Here's a website you get from attractmode.org. You just go to the download link here, you can pick it up. This is what it looks like. It has a bunch of different, what are called layouts. And you can see these layouts here. There's one that's like a horizontal one, looks like a Nest Basic. Here's another one that looks more of like a Japanese Nesco layout and so on. Now the thing to understand about this is layouts is part of what's called the display. And the display is really the thing we wanna change. In attract mode, the display contains the layout, which is the theme. It also contains a ROM list. It contains what's called a global filter. This is a filter of things we don't want to ever show up in any of our ROM lists. And then a local filter, which is something that's actually customizable per ROM list. And you can actually switch between them. So you might say, you know, I want to see only trackball games or two player games or uh, gun games or whatever and you can filter through them. So this is what a display is. We're gonna talk about layout and ROM list in this video because these are the two things we really want to adjust. So let's take a look at how the actual files are laid out here. So here's a file listing for basically an attract mode install. It's got a bunch of folders and a couple of things here. You see the attract XE. The first thing we wanna look at is this ROM list folder. In this, you can create a ROM list gen generically based on what ROMs you have in there. And that will generate, let's say, main.tech. Now, if you look inside this text file, this is what it looks like. This right here is just labeling what the semicolon delimited values are, the name, title, and so on. And then these are the actual games. And so you can see this is the name, the title, emulator. So I've created three game lists here. I created one for Marvel, one for DC, and one for all games. So I have three different things I'll be able to switch between. Layouts, I've installed the pack so you can get layouts and these are again basically themes. I've cloned one of the layouts and basically swapped out the background images. This was actually a Windows 3.1. I switched out the background for Wolfenstein and made it the uh, basically the Avengers group and that's how I got that theme done up. It's not very pretty but it just got the point across for the video. This would be a custom layout if you want to do one or it can just be any layout that you want to choose but you do need a layout to select, and that's important. So now we have our layout and our ROM list. Once you have those two, then this starts becoming really simple. The next thing we're gonna do is we'll actually go into attract mode and set this up. Okay, what I've done here is actually launched attract mode, and what I can do is hit tab to actually go into the configuration section, and we'll go up to, you see there's our display section here. Now under these displays, we can have different names, and when we set up the display, then you can see the ROM list and name and so on. So here's the layout. And in this case, I chose the layout that I made for DC, which was the basically the Batman uh, looking one. And then for collection ROM list, you can see this shows those four text files essentially that I can select between. So I'm gonna select MAME DC here. Now what I did was in that folder for ROM lists under MAME DC, so we go to ROM lists, and then main DC, I filtered my files down to be just the DC games. For main Marvel, of course, I did the same thing and we filtered down to Marvel games. So when I select main DC, this is only gonna be the DC games and the DC layout and I'm calling it DC main. Now that display being called DC main is really important because that's what I'm gonna key off of. Now I can also do global filters and so on here. Any of this would be configurable and be saved under the name DC Mame. The next one I called Avengers. This is what basically my Marvel one, I called it Avengers in this case. 
And you see I created a layout called Avengers. And then, again, main Marvel for my ROM list. And then you've got your filter and global filters. Now, once you have those, the next section of this is we're going to want to be able to select different displays when we hit a certain key. Now, when you have displays by default, if you hit left and right key, it will switch between them. So you can see this is our Marvel display, our all display, and our DC display. But we want to make it so that if we hit like the number two or the number one, it switches. There's two things we have to do to make that happen. The first thing is we want to go into controls. And down here in controls, there's custom one through six. We're going to basically set these up. You don't want to use one, two, and three, but you do want to use a couple of keys, one per different setup that you're going to do. Now I have three setups, so I have three keys. You want to use keys that are not normally used. Number one and two are actually a terrible choice because that's player one and two start. For now though, for the demo, just remember if I hit one, it's gonna choose custom one's action and number two is gonna choose custom two's action. That's important for the next step here where we're gonna map that to a display. Now the question is, how do we make that number go to a display? Well, we go into plugins. Let's take a quick look at our plugins folder and see what we have here. Under attract, you're gonna have a plugins folder and you're gonna have one called specific display. And the way this specific display works is you give it a display name. In this case, I give it Avengers and you give it a trigger, which is one of those keys. Now I mapped it to custom one. You can map it to any of the custom keys in this particular trigger. This means that when I hit the one key, it's going to trigger the Avengers uh, theme. Now the question, next question that we have to solve is how do we get more than one of these? Because there's only one in there. Well, I actually started doing some programming around this and realized that it wasn't the most efficient way to do it. Here's what the, what's called the nut file looks like. And it's in a, a coding language called Squirrel. So kind of funny, let's see, hopefully it's big enough to read. But if we look at this, I'll walk you through it real quick. Here's why the custom keys are the only ones that show up. It actually has like an array concept here of options. So if you need more than six, you can edit it here. What it's going to do is it's going to get the displays that you have built in and it's going to make a, a, an option list of those. And that's how it knows what displays you have and those show up in the menu. And then we go into this code here and it says basically um, if the display is not there, then we can't find it. And it sets up a signal handler. Now signal handler in Squirrel and in Attract mode means listen for a key press. So up here we set the trigger key, and in this case I had set it to custom one, and when that key gets pressed, then this event fires, and if the key matches, then it calls this set display, and it sets the display that it found. Now you see two more commands under here. This is actually how I'm manipulating Dynaframe. We don't have to know about them for this video, but I'll just real quick let you see them so that if you are interested in this, you know how I'm doing it. The other really cool pro tip about this is if you want to call a command line in Squirrel, you can use a system command here. That is super helpful. So say you wanted to fire off a command line to turn off a light or to turn on something else, you can simply do system and then do the command line. If you want to do a web request like I'm doing, you can use Cyril. And if you're a Home Assistant user, you can actually use this to do a webhook and actually hook onto some stuff that way too. So there's some really cool extensibility that you can build into here. But for now, I, I wanted to do this in a way where you wouldn't have to know how to code. There's a very simple way to get this to work. So all you have to do is take that file, copy it two more times or however many settings you want. I wanted three, so I copied it two more times and give them different names. So you see I give it two and three. What happens now is when you go into your plugins folder, you'll see that they all show up, two and three. So all I had to do is set two to a different trigger, custom two, and I set that one to DC, and then three, I set to all games and a third trigger, in this case, the three key. So let's see how that works. If I hit three, we're on the all games. If I hit two, we're on the DC games. And if I hit one, we're on the Marvel games. 
Now, one other thing to know, you saw some windows popping up. Those are the serials being fired off because I have command line things going on. To hide that, I'm running in windowed mode. What you wanna do is go to general, go to this window mode and set it to full screen. Not fill, full screen. If you set it to this, it will hide those windows and you'll be able to do things with the command line in the background and nobody would see it. It does pause the animation though for a second and I think you saw that in the demo. Okay, so at this point, you're basically to the point where you can hit a key and switch themes and that's exactly where I wanted to get you. The other thing is we've gone through Squirrel a little bit in the plugins folder so you can see how things are. I would get very curious about that if you are and kind of look through these nut files to see how these plugins are put together. Basically, I reverse engineered them to figure out how to do the command line stuff with the system folder. That's all I'm gonna do for this video. In the next video, what we're gonna do is take the Le Arduino Leonardo and the facial recognition and tie them together. We'll also do like a quick button demo, but basically we'll talk about how to hook other external electronics to this. And the reason I'm doing this and separating them the way I am is if you're into attract mode and video games, then this video here hopefully has taught you something about attract mode and how the squirrel files work together to actually set up your own custom displays. And that's where we're at now where we can hit buttons and so on. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Geek Toolkit. If you have any feedback, please put it in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that I should make more stuff like this. And if you have any cool ideas, share them with the community. Put them in the comments. You know, I think we all read that. And let me know, like, what kind of things are you thinking about using this for? What kind of scenarios are you excited about? For me personally, I'm super excited about the, you know, um, show me games from 1983, 1984, 1985, like that year filter, but also having it tie into my home automation system and my Dynaframes to really make my arcade and my music and so on all line up. I think that would be really cool. So that's what I'm excited about. Um, but for now, I got to get working on the next video so I can get you into... Arduinos and facial recognition and tying this together the rest of the way. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Until next time.